Praise God. Praise Master Jesus. Good afternoon to you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome you all into our live broadcast here today. May the Lord bless you all as you tune in in the mighty name of Jesus. Please, as you're tuning in, I want you to invite your friends. God bless you, Ebere Ruben, for joining me. God bless you in Jesus' name. Please, as you're joining, I want us to invite our friends. Let's invite our friends. Let's share it. Let's share it to our groups, our, you know, you know, friends, so that they can be blessed with what God is about to bless us with this afternoon. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He made the blind to see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, he made the lame to walk. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Keep inviting your friends. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's worship him, let's worship him. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah, hallelujah. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you. Jesus, somebody thank Jesus. Thank you, my Savior. Thank you, my Redeemer. Thank you, my dear Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Savior. Thank you, my precious God. Thank you, my dear Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, the owner of my life. Thank you, precious Jehovah. Daddy, thank you for who you are. You are my God, you are my God. You are the eye that I used to see. You are everything in my whole life. You are my Lord, you are my Lord. You are my God, you are my God. You are the eyes I used to see, Daddy. You are everything in my whole life. You are God. You are God. You are our God. You are our God. You are the eyes that we used to see. You are everything in our whole life. You are our God, there is no one like you, no one to compare you with in who world. Oh Lord, there is nobody compare with you, Daddy will give you all the praise. You are my God. 
If I am living, today is for you. If I am alive, today, Lord, is for you. Lord, all my being is for you. Mighty God, receive our praise. We have gathered to worship you again. Come and do what no man can do. Because you are our God, you are our hope. You are my God. Beloved, God bless you all this afternoon. I hope the Lord is your God. Jehovah is our God. He is our God. He is everything. He is the eyes that we used to see. He is the bread that we breathe. He is, he is our legs. He is our hands. He is everything to us. Hallelujah. God is our God. And that is why, you know, when you are, when you are open and you are worshipping Him, you just worship God as He's coming in your heart. Just worship it. Worship Him. Be, be, you know, open your heart. Release your heart. Let God do what He can do in your life. And you will see the hand of God work in your life differently like before in the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, God bless you for tuning in. Please, as you're just tuning in, I want you to click the share button, invite your friends, invite your friends. Let's do the invitation. While we are doing the invitation, we do meditation as well. As you're inviting, be meditating in the spirit. Meditate, you know, on your life. Meditate, you know, how you came into this world. Meditate the mighty hand of God upon your life. See that it's, it's, it's all about God. See that if not for God, where you are today, you won't be where you are. See that situation to be that God knows about it. Whether your situation is not palatable today, God knows about it. The Bible says all things work together for good, for good, for good. He didn't say for evil. All things work together for good. He didn't say for evil. I am telling you, which means God knows everything. Before they happen, God has already known that this thing is going to happen. So it doesn't matter where you're worshipping, where you're you know, uh, fellowshipping with me from right now, whether you're fellowshipping with me from America, you're fellowshipping with me from Canada, you know, Austria, Ireland, Germany, Norway, Spain, wherever. Wherever you're worshipping right now with me, from London, from you know, Glasgow, anywhere. Whether in Aberdeen here, whether in Nigeria, whether in Zimbabwe, Kenya, Uganda, wherever you're worshipping from right now, you're joining from Ghana, all you need to do is to connect your spirit to what we are doing right now. We can't do it more than like this. I am telling you, connect your spirit. Believe that you are in the presence of God. You are in the house of God. This is our life fellowship. This is our online life fellowship. The spirit of God is moving in our midst right now and he will locate you. You didn't tune in by accident. You didn't tune in because you just want to come and know what is going on. You just want to come and see the face of Loveline. You want to come and know what she will say today. Well, what I am saying will not matter or have meaning if God is not in it. And because it is God that we have gathered here for, you need to focus on God. You need to put your mind on God. You need to just believe that as I have stepped into this fellowship today, the God of CBHIM will locate you. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter, you know, the distance. There is no distance in the spirit. The eyes of the Lord is upon the earth. He's seeing everything that is happening in the secret and in the, even in the physical. He knows how much you have cried. He knows how much you have wept. He knows how much you have encountered that disappointment. He knows how many times, you know, how many times you have encountered that miscarriage. He knows how many times men have disappointed you. He knows how many times that contract has failed you. You know how many times you have been taken to the hospital and it seemed, it seemed like the, the sickness is not curing. I am telling you today that the word of God is coming. The power of God is locating you. It doesn't matter. All you need to do is to have faith like that of Mustard said and believe that as I have tuned in into this fellowship today, that the God of this commission, which is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the, the I am that I am, the soon coming king, the man that has come to die for the world, the man that has taken our sins away on the cross, the man that came, oh God, that we may have life, the man that was poor for our sake, he was poor so that we can be rich, he, 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 you know, he, he was spit on so that we can, be, we can be made known, we can be set free from every manner of reproach. Today, the hand of God is taking away that reproach in your life. 
If only you can believe. If only you can believe. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Bible said the name of the Lord is a strong tower. He's a strong tower. What is a tower? A tower is the thing that can tow. That can tow something. So when something can tow, you know, you know, a, a tower can tow, a, like, like just like a lorry can tow little cars. Small, smaller cars. Smaller cars cannot tow anything. But trailer can tow them. BB cars can tow smaller cars. That is to show you how big and how greater they are. Because they can't tow themselves. There are some things that the hand of God need to step in and help you to drag, to tow away every sin, every reproach, every sickness, every barrier, every delay, whatever it is, the hand of God is coming in today to tow it away because his name is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Beloved, your safety is secured. Your safety is guaranteed in Christ Jesus. Your safety is guaranteed in Christ Jesus. Where are you hiding? Are you hiding under the tabernacle of Almighty God? Are you hiding in His presence? Where are you hiding? Are you still hiding in the world? Are you still hiding in that sickness, in that pain, in that sorrow? You can't cure it yourself. You can't sort it yourself. But when you hide under the umbrella of God, those impossibility in your life, they will become possible. I don't know how else I can say it, but I'm just going to say it the way Holy Spirit has laid it in my heart. If you believe, if you have faith, if you trust God, if you know that your God is a mighty God, He's a great God. He's a great God. That is what He is. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. That I know. You know when you sing, you say, God is a great God. He is a great God. That you know. That you know. That God is a great God. In that situation, I want you to tell that situation that God is a great God. That I know. And I am telling you that before the end of this, our fasting and prayer, the Lord will show forth in your situation and make way where there is no way, in the mighty name of Jesus. He will make way in the wilderness, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. That I know. Do you believe He's a great do you believe he's a great God? Do you believe he's a great God that I know? Thank you, Jesus. Father, you are a great God. In the whole world, you are a great God. Everywhere, you are a great Great God, that I know. You are my great God, you are a great God. Jesus, you are a great God. My Lord, you are a great God, that I know. You know when you sing it, you sing it with confidence. That he is a great God, that you know. You know him because you know he's a great God. You know him because when he steps in, all the old stories will wipe off. Everything that is becoming old, that looks old in your life, they will, they will become new. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. God bless you, beloved. I thank God for today. I thank God for your life. I thank God for the gift of blessed life, health. Many of you are healthy. Many of you has not been taken to hospital. Many of you, you know, you may not be rich, but there are so many ways in which God has been so good to you. Everything is not about money. Everything is not about, you know, mansion. Everything is not about... There are so many ways, you, you, you know, you can sit down and begin to count your blessings and naming them one by one. I am telling you, child of God, if only you can be sincere to yourself. I want you to be happy every day of your life. Be happy in Christ. Know that Christ loves you. Hide yourself under the tabernacle of God so that He can secure you, He can protect you. He can save your life from the danger 
the dangers of this world. So he can save you from the hands of the wicked ones. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I welcome you all in Jesus' name. God bless you. How was your weekend? I hope you all enjoyed your weekend. I hope you did. How is the fasting going on? I hope you're fasting. I hope you're believing. You're trusting God. You're, you're waiting sincerely. You have to wait sincerely. You have to believe that what you're doing, that at the end, God will show forth in that situation. God will show forth. I am telling you, mean it. Mean it. You can see the testimonies of our brethren. All those testimonies you are seeing on my wall, they are life testimonies. I don't have time to be faking what I don't know about. I don't have time for that, to be sincere with you. Hallelujah. All those testimonies, you saw them. Many of them are last year, coupled with this year too. You know, like that, like that. I, I, I wanted to be doing them, uh, uh, posting them according to how they came in. But I noticed that it would take me time like that, because to scroll, 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 scroll. So what I do is, anyone I just meet, I, cop, I snap and edit, and they clean their face, clean their name, things like that, and post. That's how I'm doing it. Anyone I just, like that, that's how I'll be doing it. Both from WhatsApp and from Messenger. That's how I'll be doing it like that, small, small. At least with the dates and the year, you can know when it happened. So God is faithful. God is faithful. God is real. I can't be deceiving myself. I don't have time for that. I love Jesus. I want to know him more. I want to make heaven. I don't want to go to hellfire. I don't know about you. Yes, I don't know about you. God is real. Key in. Believe that at the end of this fasting, the Lord will honor you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hmm. Testimonies are coming in. They are still coming in, I'm telling you. They are still coming in. You will be the next person to share your own in the mighty name of Jesus. I can't shout it more than like this. You know, there are times in the ministry, let me tell you something. There are times in the ministry where, you know, in, 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 you know, you, you, people who just you pray, 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 pray. You you chat on top of your voice. You pray, yaga, daga, daga, igele, de, 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 bo, shaga, da, 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 You know, a lot of things. You know, things like that. There are times you don't even need to talk too much or shout too much. Maybe people think when you shout or scream, that's when the anointing flow. Anointing does not flow like that. The anointing is inside. When you release it, it come out. That's it. I am telling you. It depends on the situation. It depends on the atmosphere. So what I'm trying to say is that believe. When you tune in like this here, don't tune in for joke. Believe. If you know you're just com coming here to come and watch or look or don't, you know, just, I don't know what I will say. It is better you come and know what you're doing. Look at a testimony of a sister last week, just last week here, I think last week Friday, the, the first day we started the fasting, this fasting. A sister was, you know, watching me live here from Nigeria. I am telling you. And a word came out for her. A word came out for her. You know, she was so amazed. That word, I don't even know what is it. Because sometimes God will use, a, a, you use when as a prophet or a servant of God, you'll be ministering. You don't know. Holy Spirit will just be talking through you. At the end of the day, you won't even remember some of the things you said. The sister said it, that just that word came out. Not long, her, her phone, you know, rang. And it was her friend from America. A friend of hers from America. I forgot, you know, sometimes... And I mentioned something like that last week, last, that Friday. Anybody, wherever, anybody that forgotten you, whatever, God will touch them. And the lady, she couldn't hold the, uh, the excitement. She saw it. She just put it on, uh, commented it on the video. The, immediately, that word came out for her, that God visited her, you know. That was why I put her face like I didn't erase her face. I didn't scrub it because she was not ashamed to share the testimony. She was so excited. I mean, what are we ashamed of? Eh? We are screaming, we are covering our face, cleaning for all those things. Why are we ashamed? Why are we ashamed of her testimony? I tell people, you, you know, some people God will bless them. Even in the church, even in the ministry, life, life, apart from this Facebook one, life or on crusade like this, or in any way in the church. Testimony time, blessing time. Testimony time, blessing time. Some people will sit down. And they know that they have testimony to share. They will sit down on their chair. They will sit down. They will not come, come out to come and share testimony. Eh? 
When you are in that situation, you ran to God. Jesus healed you. Jesus bless you. And now come back and share the testimony among the brethren. Because in the congregation, there are still people who are still believing God for one thing or another. There are still people who are still trusting God. It could be your testimony that, that can strengthen a, a, a weakened heart. It could be your testimony that can bring back life to somebody who is about to die. I am telling you, it could be your testimony. And when such things happen, it will be recorded unto you for righteousness. Because it is through the ability of your comforting yourself to come to share it that bring about the, the sister's deliverance or healing or whatever or restoration. Any of us who keep quiet will be ashamed. We don't want to come and share. Eh? Let us repent. This time is hour of repentance. I want us to repent from all manner of behavior. Sin, sin, sin. Sin is of different category. The Bible says, Jesus said, My glory shall no man take. When God bless you and you want to swallow his glory unto yourself. I mean, tomorrow... You, in one way or another, something will happen. You want to come to God again. It doesn't matter whether you come to this ministry or not. Some people are like that. They are ho ho hopers. Hopers of a church. Hoping from church to church. Ministry to ministry. Even this online itself. There are a lot of them like that. They, are, they will be hoping. They hope from this one to that one. They, are, they don't have a stable place of worship. They don't have a stable place of fellowship. They are just hoping around. Hoping, hoping, hoping. Tomorrow you come back to God. Say, God, oh, do this one for me. God will look at you say this one that I blessed at that time and he, he or she refused to give me my glory, refused to share, refused to you know testify. When you testify, God is happy. You are, you are, you are boasting of your God. There's nothing anybody can do. Forget it. Because the God that you are portraying, he's not, a, he's not a blind God. Hallelujah. So, I want you to Stay open. Stay open. Jesus could be passing your direction. Jesus is passing this way. Hey. This way. Hey. This way. Hey. Jesus is passing this way. Hey. He's passing this way right now oh jesus father you are faithful you are a faithful god you are a faithful god and i will serve you to the end in the mighty name of jesus jesus is passing this way yes lord this way hey this way hey hey Jesus is passing this way. Hey, he's passing this way right now. I still have lots of testimony to share with you. When we, I'm sharing them all to the glory of God and shame to the devil. I am telling you, God is still in the business of blessing people. God is still in the business of remembering his children. All he wants from us is faithfulness. Believe. Trust in him. Repent from your sin. That is the only thing. When you come to God, you don't expect to remain like that. Trust God. Because if you don't trust that God can handle it, why are you running to God in the first place? You, you see, I don't like deceiving myself or deceiving anybody. It's as simple as that. Why will you run to God if you believe God cannot do it? You have to trust God. You have to have faith. You have to listen to what God is telling you at every point in time. When you run to God in the time of adversary, He tells you, my daughter, do like this, do like that, do it. Don't argue. Don't follow itchy ears. The Bible says on the last days, He said, men shall turn to, men shall be lovers of themselves. Heaping up preachers, teachers for themselves. And that's what is happening today. Forming itchy ear. When they see truth, they will say they don't want to hear it. What they want to, what they want to do, like, that's what they hear. That's what they follow. That's what they run after. Kiri, 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 kiri. Like this. The Bible says, narrow is the way that leadeth to heaven. Narrow is the way. But broad 
is that way that is wide open like this. Anything goes. Anything goes. Anything goes. But that narrow way is not everything that will go. So, if you find yourself in this type of situation, you as a child of God, why worry yourself? Eh? Why worry yourself? Why weeping? Why crying? Why regretting? Don't regret. The Bible says, weeping may endure for a night. Say, joy comes in the morning. Your joy is coming. This is your morning. I am telling you. Somebody, this is your morning. This is your morning. This is your morning. This is your morning. Where I was having my bath this afternoon, let me just quickly share that word. Where I was having my bath this afternoon, preparing to take my son to school, then come back for the life ministration. After the life ministration, I rush back to, you know, by then they will close from school. So that is it. So where I was, you know, having my bath, the Holy Spirit ministered in my heart, you know, that is somebody. You are doing something. You are doing something for God. You are doing something. You are doing that thing. You know, because as I, as I was bathing, I was meditating on my today's uh, message. You know, I was meditating. I said, God, take over. Take over today's program. Bless people. I said, Father, look at a lot of plenty, plenty prayer requests. Your children have dropped there. Because I put a comment, say, drop your prayer request. You know, and since then I've been meditating on them by the grace of God. Everything is faith. Oh. If faith, that's it. If you have faith, God will locate you. So while I was, uh, you know, meditating, I was meditating, I said, God, please, in, look at plenty uh, prayer requests. It's lined up there. Touch your people according to their needs, according to their, you know, touch them. Eh? I feel for them. When I read some, you know, comment like that, I feel, I feel, I don't know what to do. The only thing I can do is to be praying for you. So be praying for you. And I know that God will visit you. You are next in line. So one of the, the, the things always been dropped in my heart was that there is somebody... <clears throat> You know, you are doing something for God. You are doing something for God. But suddenly you just stop doing it. Maybe because you feel you don't have much again. Maybe because uh, you think the situation has changed. Let me tell, let me tell us something. Eh? You see people, human beings, um, uh, sometimes human beings will make you want to change or behave the way you don't want to behave. I want to, I want to um, you know, I, I, I advise us this afternoon. Whatever you know you are doing, you that is good. The Bible says we should be imitators of what is good. Say, be ye imitators of what is good. It didn't say we should be imitating what is not good. So in other words, if you are a, a, a child of God, a, 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 a man with the, a heart of milk, don't allow people to make you begin to misbehave or do the way, the, the way God has not created you. Or situation or circumstance. Some people say their circumstance has changed them. The, 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 the situation they find themselves has changed their person. You know, they are kind, they are good, they are, you know, but situation they find themselves has made them change. Some people, friends, has made them change. Some people, family members, has made them change totally. Some people, companies, has made them change the mentality of how they work with companies. You can see, you know, somebody who is fake, you know, but the mentality, the, 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 um, uh, the encounter that he had, things that has happened, will make him to change mentality. You know, the same thing in the body of Christ. There could be people that you, you know, believers, you encounter. They will make you want to change your mentality. Let me tell you. The word of God says, say, heaven and earth will do what? Pass away. He said, but my word will remain. Whose word? The word of God. The word of God will ever remain. It cannot pass away. It can't pass away. So you know, you know yourself. I don't know who is that person. You are good. You are kind. You love God. But suddenly you stop doing what you are supposed to be doing for God. You stop it. Sometimes some of us, we do things, you know, for God. We think we are doing it for man. Some of them, they are like that. Maybe you are in your church or wherever you are fellowshipping or wherever you connect. Or maybe you're in this ministry. Whatever, wherever you are. Maybe you are that type that likes sweeping the church of God. Maybe because pastor is not noticing you, suddenly you change. Eh? This pastor says every time he's not noticing that I'm the one sweeping this church. He's not noticing. Or you are the one in the choir. You, you, don't, you don't need human notification. I don't know what is it you have stopped doing. That is... That is the word the Lord laid in my heart. I've not even started the message itself. 
But look at how God is leading us. I, I, I yield to the, to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. He is the, he is the driver. I am the car. I am just a car. It's just like, you know, a car cannot drive itself until the driver comes in. That's how it is. Any child of God, you are a born again child of God, whether you are, you are a preacher or not. If you are a born again, you are a car of the Lord. You are the car that God will, he will be driving. He will drive you to wherever you want to drive you to and use you to do that. You can't move yourself when God is not. Hallelujah. Praise God. So if you know that thing you are doing, start doing it again. Some of us, we are givers. We are givers. We are sowing. We are sowing. We are sowing. We are sowing. We are givers. We are tithing. We are, we, are, we are doing. You know, maybe at some point, you feel you have arrived. You have gotten all that you needed, all that you wanted. You just say, God, who are you? You now begin to eat your tithe. You now begin to, you know, live your life as you want. You now begin to club. You now begin to carry woman. You now begin to live life that you avoided when you were seeking the face of God for intervention. Now God has answered you. All you could pay God back is to tell God, oh, um, it's, it's church time now. Or pray, ah, I don't think I can no. I don't think I can be able to uh, move to church today. Hey, church. No. You begin to give excuses. But while you were in need, you never gave any excuse. You pursued it until you got all you wanted. Now God is now an excuse. God is now an excuse. Hallelujah. Let's change. That, that's what God dropped in my spirit this afternoon. Where I was having my bath. Whoever is that you know yourself. It will be a sin to me to keep to myself whatever God has laid in my heart. To, to share with the body of Christ. And it will be a sin to you too. Who knows it is you. Because when, when, when word is coming out. Eh, no matter the congregation you will know. I have, I have attended crusades several, several times back home then in Africa. That will go to, hey, there is crusade in Uniport. I will leave my area. I will, huh? I will, if I don't have money for travel, I will walk from room or room or cruise, uh, uh, room or room or lumini. I will walk from room or lumini to Uniport for crusade. I am telling you, it's no joke. God is my witness as I'm standing here. I will walk down. In, in the crusade there, you see, God will speak. God will speak word, no matter how thousands that are gathered. No matter. Whether you fall under anointing and begin <laughs> to confirm, it doesn't matter. Whether you don't fall under anointing, no. When that word of God struck you, when that word of God go out, it will locate whoever has that word. Whether you fall under anointing and begin to roll on the floor, it can happen like that for confirmation. Whether you don't fall under and you fall and begin to roll on the floor, it will, it will hit your heart like this. Boo! Like when, you know, boxers, when they box your heart, that is how it will be. You will know, hey, that this word is for me. Within you, you will know that it's for you. There's not too much argument about it. So if you fail to repent, God has warned you. And why is he warning you? It's because he loves you. You want to begin to do what he's doing in your life like before. The Bible said the prodigal son suddenly, despite all that his father had, he thought he could get better outside than what his father had. He left. He left his father's house. Many of us were like that today. We have left what we are doing for God. We have left our relationship with God. We have left our prayer life. We have left, you know, kindness. We have left sincerity. We have left so many things because we are hot. Because we don't want to, you know, self-excuse. Yes, of course, self-excuse can be the reason why somebody wants to just stop something. Not that anything happened, but self-excuse. He, he or she wants to start pleasing him or herself, doing things on his or her own way. He doesn't want, you know, God to interfere anymore. Because how will God interfere in your life? It is through this shepherd that he has, keep, you know, given you to shepherd you. God can speak through your shepherd. God can speak through you. When you fellowship 
often, often, the word of God will be, you know, reminding you of his promises, rebuking you of the things that you ought to do and the things that you ought not to do. That is the essence of we being a child of God. So if you know where you have missed it, God wants somebody to go back. The prodigal son left. He wandered away. He wandered away. What is wandering? When a man is, when a man is wandering, you know, wandering away, wandered left, wandered left, wandered right, front, back. They are just wandering. You are wandering about nothing. That was what happened to the prodigal son. He walked and walked and walked and walked. At the end of the day, the Bible said he knew that where he was what a, was a better place for him. No place could be better than his father's house. What did the Bible say happened next? The Bible said he realized his mistake and he did what? He went back home immediately. And when he came back home, the, the father did not abandon him. Or reject him, or, 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 or you know, uh, uh, crucify him, or persecute him. He accepted him back to himself. And a good father will also sit that child down, maybe later, and they talk senses into that child. Say, like this, like that. You know, it's not, like, it's not good like that. Sometimes, you know, children, when we are growing up like this, eh, I, I was once like that, you know? <clears throat> when we are growing up, father will tell you, don't do like, don't go there. Don't do like this. Hey, that one is what you want to do. You know, you want to know better than, you, than your father. You want to know better than your spiritual father, than your spiritual mother, than God that has placed them over you. When the prodigal son wandered away, nothing good was happening in his life. A rich man in his father's house become nobody. Become somebody that want to now want to become a, 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 a servant to a, another man. Can you imagine that? Many of us, God has placed us to the level that we need to be running and not walking again. But our attitude and our behavior still keep us walking. It's not a joke. Still keep us walking. When we are supposed to be running. You know, there's something you, you run, you run, you begin to fly. That is it. Many of us, our attitude, our behavior, our to know. Hmm, God, hmm, God, please, I don't need your counsel anymore. I, I, I can read my Bible, I can pray. I can pray. I can read my Bible. I'm fellowshipping with my children at home now. I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. The Bible says, forsake not the garden of the saints. Forsake not God. A prayer you pray in your house, we know. Everybody is praying at house. God is good. Let's be one. Let's do what God wants us to do. The prodigal son came back home and his life changed. Somebody like your life is about to change. God is about to touch your life. If only you can come back to him. If only you can reason now as you're hearing this and go back to your closet after this message and say, Lord, I repent from this. Because they're supposed to be. I see God taking you higher. I see God taking you higher. I see God taking you. Did this person? God wants to take you higher, but you you draw yourself down. You draw yourself down. You put yourself where you're not supposed to be, even at this moment. My goodness me, let's repent. There's no time to be wasting anymore. He that the Lord chastises, He loves. If God doesn't love, love you, he will not chastise us. If I don't love you, I will be like, hmm, I don't want to say some things now. So that people will not run away. People will not come and listen to my video again. So that people will not follow me or like my comment. Well, it's your choice. The word of God said, I set before you this day life and death. He said, choose life. That you may live. You and your descendant. So it's a choice. God has set before you life and death. So if you do what is right, that is life. If you are doing what is wrong, that is death. Everlasting condemnation. Not my word, but the word of God. So if I refuse to give out the word of God, as God is leading me. Look at now. 
you have my message here, but Holy Spirit was just still like rebuking us, correcting us. That is, that is what I, I wanted to go. Hallelujah. So it will be it will be a, it will be a sin to me to come and say oh, I don't want to so that anybody will not feel this one. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how we feel. God is the ultimate, and he's, He will be the ultimate for everyone. of God, I want us to you know, go into the message now. Let's go into the message now by the grace of God. Brief, maybe we'll just read one scripture. I have a couple of scriptures here, but because of time, we'll just, just read one. I'll put the rest on the post on the video later. You can just you know read them after this ministration. You just read them and uh, you know pray with them, meditate on them. Allow God, allow God. Let's not be you know stressing ourselves anymore. There's no time. There's no time. Look at the hour we are into now. This, this, uh, this is end time. This is end time. Many of us, we don't believe it. Many of us is still, we don't believe it because we are not sensitive to, to, to what is right. That's why we don't believe it. We are not sensitive to what is right. The Bible says, carnal minded man cannot understand the things of the Spirit. When you are sensitive to the Word of God, when you are sensitive to seasons and times, you will know that the season we are at right now is not, in, in, you know, I mean, look at what is, we, we are supposed to be entering a spring now, but we are still, you know, seeing snow all over, all over places. Snow, snow, since last week. Snow. Children could not go to school. It's even just today that the thing just, you know, melting, melting off. And as it's melting off now, bad cold. Terrible one. Eh? So, we should be sensitive to season. We should, be, we should know oh, we are about to enter a, a, a dry season. We are about to enter rainy season. A man, a carnal, man, a carnal minded man, will misunderstand rainy season for dry season because he's not sensitive. What will make a man sense, you know, be sensitive is when you are close to God. When you are close to God, God will remind you things that are you know, necessary. Not things that are important. Because there are two different things, you know, with this word. Important and necessary. For example, now, I can go to market. Everybody, we are all expected to put on clothes. We are all expected to put on shoes. It's necessary that we put on, uh, you know, it's important that we put on, uh, 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 how, how, how they put it, whether it's important that you put on a uh, dress. But it's, it's, it's necessary you put on dress, but it's not important you buy the expensive one. Whether you choose or crack now, you choose, okay, you buy it, wash it, iron it properly, and dress up. You come out, you look good. If you don't have money to go and be buying, uh, 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 or, or ordering from uh, 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 Kavancha abroad, leave those ones that are still ordering from abroad. Maybe they have the money, or they are doing things they're not supposed to do. Don't follow them and do it. You don't know what they are doing. It's necessary we put on clothes, but it's not, it's not important. It's, 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 it's important we put on. It's not necessary you buy the 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 uh, uh, important uh, the expensive ones. Expensive when you know you can't afford it. All those things will be leading us to sin. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I will stop the invitation right now. Let me let's go on to the message. By the grace of God, I want to share with us. A brief topic, topic titled Divine Elevation. Divine. <laughs> elevation. Let's open to 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians 6. 2 Corinthians 6. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 6. Let's read from 
Let's just take it from one and see. Apostle Paul is there, you know, defying the body of Christ, defying the, you know, the, the, the leaders, encouraging them, encouraging the body of Christ, encouraging myself and you, just like what has gone out today. Hallelujah. He said, we then, say we then as workers, we then as workers together with him also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. You see, don't receive the grace of God if you don't. You know, it just all these things I've just explained. Hallelujah. He said, For he, for he says, in an acceptance of time, in an acceptance, in an acceptable time, I have heard you, and in the day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted, accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So God is calling you, calling us to repentance. He's calling us. He's calling us. Now that you are, we are waiting on the Lord, we are fasting now. You need to separate yourself. You need to, you know, leave whatever that will, will cause, you know, you and God problem. Remove, just separate yourself. Hallelujah. He said, behold, now is it accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And three said, we give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed. So you see, you see, so if, if I refuse to deliver what God has, I, I will be blamed. I don't want my ministry to be blamed. I don't want God to blame me. That's why you see in this ministry, in this work that I'm doing, in this ministry work that God has called me. That's what God has called me to do. I'm not doing any other work, this ministry work. That's what I'm doing. Since I graduated, since I graduated from my school, God has been calling me long ago. I'm telling you, I'm the one just, you know, enjoying nonsense life. Following friends about. Thinking that is the, the you know, the, 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 the life. Wasting my time. When I remember it said, the thing used to annoy me self in a way. Wasting my time. Until there will be a time that it will come like this, eh? You cannot run from God anymore. He can't. When he, he knows what to grab you with. Whether with sickness or... Or whether with anything, he knows how to chain you down and begin to use you by force. But I don't want us to, you know, I don't want you to get to that extent, you know, for you and I. Sister Oni, welcome for, for joining. Sister Oni, really, God bless you for joining. God bless you all. God bless you in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Say, behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed. This is Apostle Paul ad admonishing the body of Christ with love. Eh? You as a child of God, you, you, know that you know that this thing is, is not good and you are doing it. God will blame you. God will blame you. God is not going to, going to blame uh, uh, whoever. It is you that God will blame. That is why we need to be careful with our race, with our relationship with God, you know, so that we will not be blamed by God on the last day. It doesn't matter how anybody will see it or how whatever it doesn't matter it doesn't matter you know in the in the midst of a, in, in a battlefield it will get to a stage where in, you know in the beginning everybody will be doing like yeah it's going it's not going at some point you see that the battle will become tough it will become tougher just like a, 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 a footballers or a tennis players or all those things when they begin pa 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 like play play at some point, you will see the thing become something else. Everybody will... Bah, 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 bah. That is it. Seriousness has come in. No more play, no more laugh. Whether the people that are watching on the... On the, on the, on the uh, that are sitting on the congregation are watching and laughing and shouting. You don't even know who is where they are. Whether your father is there watching, you don't even know anymore. Anybody sitting there, you don't care anymore. What, what you care about is how you will win the, 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 the cup. How you will carry that cup out of that stadium. That is what you are after. Hallelujah. So that is how this race we are running. In fact, in this hour, that is how it is. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, he said, we give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed. But in all things, we commend ourselves as ministers of God. Not only preachers, ministers, you are a minister of God as well. Because as a believer, when you are called and when you, are, when you give your life to Jesus Christ, you are born again, you repent, you profess Christ, you know, you represent him. 
Not when they say minister, not the minister of uh, I don't know. It's, it's so that people will not be misunderstanding some other things to other things. Hallelujah. So you are a minister of you are a child of God. I'm a minister of the gospel. Called out from among the five food ministries, a minister of Jesus. Hallelujah. So that is the thing. Hallelujah. He said, He said, but put in all things. We commend ourselves in as the ministers of God in much peace, in much patience, in tribulations, in needs, in distress. You know, I don't know the distress may be going through right now. You see, the word of God is encouraging us. Be who God wants you to be in that situation. He said, in in in, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors. You are laboring. Many of you are laboring right now. People are laughing at you. You look as if you don't know what you are doing. Forget laughter. Forget who is mocking you. Forget who, who is saying, hey, let's see how it will be. Let's see how it will go. Don't worry yourself. You know what you are doing. At the end, they will see that it's true. You mean what you are doing. And at the end, the, the crown of glory will be awaiting for you in the mighty name of Jesus. And he said, um, in, 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 in stripes, in imprisonment, in tumults, in labors, in sleepless nights, in fasting, which is what we are doing now. Sleepless nights. Look at me now. I, I don't sleep like that. Some of you may be wondering why am I online every every time. I'm online. Why? What, what am I online doing? I'm online doing the work of God. I don't have any other work I'm doing. I'm online. I'm, though that I'm online doesn't mean that uh, uh, my, uh, my signal is live. doesn't mean that I'm there. Sometimes my messenger will be on or anything. I may not be there in person, but I leave it on like that so that message will be coming in. When I have my time, I, I, I see to them, I answer them. I don't sleep. I have so many things I am doing for God. By the time I finish this message now, I rush to go and pick the children from school. After that, they come back. We will rest. Before you know it's small, small time. Night, come, bring, bring, prepare. Have small rest. Come back again. Watch who have dropped message. Reply, 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 reply. Reply, reply. Send testimonies. You know, so like that, like that. There's no no rest in this world. No rest. We only rest when we when a man dies. That's when he rests. There's no rest. As long as we are living, we will continue to labor. Just like uh, uh, Apostle Paul said it here in Second Corinthians six verse five. He said in sleepless now in sleeplessness, in in fasting, you know, humbling our spirit, humbling our flesh. In fasting, which is what we are doing right now. Continue, the Lord will help you. Say by purity, by purity, by purity, by purifying yourself, by separating yourself from things that are, you know, polluting your relationship with God. Let me just put it like that. Hallelujah. Say by purity, by knowledge, by long suffering, eh? by kindness. You see, all these things will be by kindness, by the Holy Spirit. By sincere love. By sincere love. Oh God, I love you. Oh God, I love you. Oh God, I love you. Let us see when temptation comes. Let's see whether you love the God. Many of us love God only on the lip. We love God when we have need. That's when we love God. But we don't love God whether situations are good, whether they are bad. We don't love God. God can test you with anything. Then God can test you. Maybe you have been waiting on the Lord for a baby. For many years, like many of you have been writing me, a lot of cases like that. I don't know what your case is as you're listening. I am telling you, it could be, it could be, it could be God is testing your faith. It could be that God wants to use that privilege to test whether you truly love. You truly. Do you think if I want to test somebody now, if I want to test you now, come and be packing, pro, to throwing money on the floor everywhere. I'll throw money. I'll be throwing money everywhere. I will throw it. When I will test yourself, you won't even know that I'm testing you. You won't even know. Because why? I don't want anybody to come and uh, rubbish, you know, the work of God in my heart. I don't want anybody to come and, uh, you know, everybody claim to love God, love God, love God. God can only know whether you love him in that situation you find yourself, whether you are still faithful, whether you are still serving God, loving God, doing what you are doing. That's when God will know whether you love him or not. 
not when everything is good, is where with the, the bed is rosary. Hallelujah. Say, and he said, seven said, by the word of truth, by the word of truth, which is the truth we are saying here, we are hearing the word of God in truth and in spirit. I am adding nothing. I'm saying it as it's coming, as the word of God is describing it. Hallelujah. Said by, uh, uh, by the word of truth, by the power of God, you see, it is the power of God that, you know, make all things happen the way it has said it. It's not me that is doing it. Too. I'm not the one doing anything. I can't do anything. I don't have power to do anything. I can't do anything. It's God. Hallelujah. Say by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness, by the armor of righteousness. In fact, from verse 7, 2 Corinthians 6, 7 and 8, is the strength you, you gain in order to overcome from 1 to 5. Hallelujah. Praise God. He said, by honor and by dishonor, by evil report and by good report, as deceivers and yet true. Hallelujah. He said, as known and yet well known, as dying and, be, and behold, we live. You may think you are dying. You are not dying anything. You know, when you are serving God, a lot of stress, a lot of challenges, a lot of you know, problem, neglection. Sometimes you are alone, you are left alone. Nobody wants to associate with you because of your level of closeness with God. All those things forget. To you, you may be thinking, oh, you are dying. You are not dying. He said, you are, you are not dying. You will live. He said, as, uh, uh, as chastened, God is chastening us, is correcting us, and yet not killed. You see, as God is chastening you, he, he chastising you, you know, yet you are not killed. The chastisement of God does not kill any man. It will cost us, you know, pain. And that pain there is the sacrifice. That is the sacrifice. The same way we pay sacrifice to get what we want. To get luxury, car, build, here, yeah, you know, enjoy life, you know, please ourselves. Go extra mile to make money. All those people that are doing ritual and all those things. That's the sacrifice they think they can pay. Many of us are paying sacrifice on so many things. That's how it is in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And he said, Ten, say, as sorrowful. You may be sorrowful now, I don't know your situation. Yet, always rejoicing. You are sorrowful, but yet, there is a bit of joy. Just like me as I'm here now. If I tell you that since I gave my life to Jesus, oh God, only you can bear me witness. It has never been easy. In fact, it right from one those states itself when I started this my salvation work with God. At a point, I feel like giving up. Because I had one kind of encounter in, in the in a fellowship there, in, in our church day. I feel like quitting, but I didn't quit. The grace of God was there. You see, the grace of God was there. He said, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many riches. As having nothing and yet possessing all things. So, <clears throat> you don't have nothing. It will look as if you don't have anything now. But the joy of the Lord is making way for you. Making way for you. Surviving you at every step of the way. Even when I went to Patakot, the Holy Spirit moved me to Patakot. It was not easy for me. In fact, it was not easy. At a point, my stuff was thrown out. From the person I was living with, which is a family, a family, like in a related family. <laughs> it's not, it's, it may look like it's a joke. It's not a joke. Play, 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 play. I had another encounter too that, uh, you know, I almost want to give up, but I didn't give up. I didn't give up. I didn't give up. I didn't even give up in my, in my church. I didn't give up. I persisted on. I, 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 you know, I, I keep moving. Hallelujah. Until I got married and, and, and joined and, and traveled to, to, to United Kingdom with the ministry since 2010. Since 2010, this ministry in United Kingdom. It is not easy. The now that I'm talking to you is not easy. God has been there all the way. At every step, at every step. How you be doing itself, you'll be surprised. What is... You feel like discouraging, but in a way you see, God will just show you that he's there. All those things are 
packaging us, packaging us to higher level, to growing higher in the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as, as poor, yet making uh, many riches, as having nothing, yet possessing many or many things. Let me say, oh Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. So Paul has spoken to the Corinthians. He has spoken to them. I have spoken to the body of Christ today. That be open to God. Let your heart be open. Let your mind be wide open to the voice of the Lord. He said, you are not restricted by us. But you are restricted by your own affections. You see, nobody is chasing you away from the body of Christ. Nobody is, uh, you know, uh, 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 driving you. Nobody is, uh, 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 most times we are the one chasing ourselves. We are the one running from God, from God. When God has not done us anything, we will be running. They, 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 they say the, the thief run it where no man uh, pursue it. The Bible said the thief run it where no man pursue it. You see a thief running. Nobody is pursuing him. Why are you running from, from God? Why are you running from God? Don't run from God. Come to your God and God will show you mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. And he said, verse 12, he said, you are not restricted by us. You are, you are restricted by your own affections. Your affections, how you feel. Some of us will feel somehow, oh, if I go back to God, will God accept me? Oh, if I go back serving God the way I'm serving God before, will God accept me? Or maybe a church where you belong to, or a belong to a ministry or wherever you belong to, you are doing what God asks you to do, and suddenly you just move your own way or do what they're supposed to do, like a prodigal son. He say, "Oh, I don't know whether I will be accepted, or I don't know whether this one will happen." Nothing is happening. Obey the voice of God. Follow God's instruction, and the will of God alone will be done over our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Praise God. Child of God, I will read again verse 13. Say now, in, in, in return for the same, in return for the same, I speak as children. You also be open. You children, everybody. Paul is speaking as is, you know, everybody be open to God, be open to the word of God, be open to the advice of God. 14 say, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has unrighteousness? with lawlessness yeah? and what communion has light with darkness you are a light you don't need to associate much with unbeliever well to me that is the word of god say you know what what the scripture is trying to tell you is that don't go back to your vomit don't go back to your vomit don't sin anymore you know, like to me now, nah, to me, we all have a different view or how we see scripture. Be not equally on yoke. Eh? Paul said that. But to me now, nah, mm, I can I can equally yoke with the unbeliever in a way. In a way, listen to my own my own um, um opinion. Be be not equally yoke with unbeliever. For example, now nah, I'm a believer. So I have thought one thing. If I now begin to run from uh, uh, all, you know, well, it depends. It depends. It depends on your level of worldliness or whatever. I mean, I say this one, you will not listen. That kind of a thing. You just, you just keep your keep to yourself, you know. But as believers, we need to open up. We need to, you know, loosen up a bit, not too much harden. Come to people, you know, speak the word of God to them, share the word of God to them. Whether you are a prostitute, you can be my friend. Doesn't matter. Whether you are, whatever you are, you can be my friend, it doesn't matter. But all, one thing I know is that at this my level with God, you cannot push me to sin. You can't push me back to the world. You can't push me back to where I'm coming from. You can't. I can't follow you. If I see that you want to, your, you know, it's becoming too much. There are times that there are some things you cannot, you just give way. Just say, you know, give long group. You give long group. You cut of that relation because the Bible say, cut any of your finger. Is any of your fingers that will do what put you to sin? You should do what you should cut it off. The Bible does not mean your finger. 
Bible did not say you should cut your finger. You know, you know the word of God always come in parable. He said, any of your finger that will put you to see, say, cut it off. That finger there is anything, anybody, any man, any woman, whether it's your father or mother, anybody, anybody did not say anything. You have to do what? Cut it off. How do you cut it off? You separate yourself. It doesn't mean you hate that person. It doesn't mean you don't love that person. You just want to protect what you have. Because the level you are in, in God is not what is not the level the person is. The person is, is, a, is somebody who has not given his life to Christ. So he can't understand you. He doesn't know where you are coming from. He doesn't know what he has cost you to get you know, to the level you are with God. So, and sometimes people of the world seem to misunderstand it. They will say, see them now. They think they are holier than me. They are, this, they are separating themselves. It's a matter of separating self. You are just trying to, you know. You don't hate them. I don't hate anybody as you see me here. I love everybody. But what I don't take is nonsense. If I want to show you what will help your life, what will better your life, what bettered my own life, my own life, what bettered it is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Is the moment I repent, the moment I gave my life to Jesus, the moment I live sinning, that is when Jehovah came into my life and began to lead me from step, step one to step two. I didn't from step 100 and come to step 1. Step 1 to step 2. Little by little. My little has becoming, has, is becoming a lot. Let me not say has become. So that somebody will not say, have I arrived? Have I reached heaven? I'm not, I've not arrived yet. I'm still working on myself. I'm still working it. Working on it. Hallelujah. Praise God. So that is it. Look at that scripture. Be not equally yoked with unbelievers. So, you can yoke with them in a way. You can still not yoke with them in a way. It's up to you. But whatever you are yoking with them with, yoke with your sense. Hallelujah. So that they will not yoke you inside sin. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, verse um, 15 says, And what accord has Christ with uh, uh, Bella? What, a, what accord? Or... What part has believers with a non-believer? To me, like I said, an unbeliever can be my friend. Though. But um, if I'm coming to your life as a non-believer, I'm coming for a mission. You can't just expect me to come into your life because I'm coming because I'm seeing you as somebody whom the devil doesn't want you to see the light of God. So if I'm coming in your way, I will come to share the word. I will, you know. I will, God will just help me in a way. But if I see that you don't want to, you are not helping matter, I will leave. I will leave. And I said again, it depends on the situation. It depends. It's not everywhere I see now. I will, I will jump in because I want to save somebody. Hallelujah. I'll save you so. We have to be using wisdom. Praise God. So that is it for that uh, uh, verse. 15, 2 Corinthians 16, uh, 2 Corinthians 6, verse 15. And verse 16 says, And what agreement has temple of God with the idol? Idol, idol. What has the temple of God? You see all these things the word of God is telling us. It is a lot. There is a lot. You know that word, idol, is a very broad topic on its own. That word, idol. What is the idol in your life today? What is the idol? It could be idol of disobedience to the word of God. It could be, it could be idol of rebellion. Look at, if you read that scripture from 1, 1 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 6, from verse 1. The Bible said again, say, on the last day, on the last day, eh? he said, men shall be so the love of God will wax cold. Wax cold in the heart of men. Men shall be lovers of themselves. 
the, the love of God will wax cold. And men will now become lovers of themselves. Having each ear, itching ears. Heaping up all kinds of preaching. You know, in the generation today now, people choose what they want to listen to. They choose it. Oh, my papa. Ah, my mama. Well, that is it. That is it. All those things. What you are healing? Is it, is it nourishing your soul? Is it preparing you towards, you know, you know, towards your, your salvation in, in, in Christ? What you are hearing? Are you, are, are, you, are you preparing for the coming of Jesus? Are you conscious of what is happening in the world of today? I like praying very well. I'm an intercessor as you see me here. But sometimes, eh, I want to pray, I want to pray for somebody. What do you do with that? Teach them the word. Teach them what they teach them the word. So you need to tell people the truth. Let them know. Prayer is very good. It's very good that we pray. It's very good that we... But when you don't hear what you need to hear in this season, in this hour, that the world is turning upside down. The coming of Jesus is at hand. The coming of Jesus is very soon. We will be making mistakes. And I don't want us to make mistakes in the mighty name of Jesus. And again, I read. If you look at that uh, 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 16, it said, And what agreement has the temple of God with idol? You are the temple of God. You are a child of God. You are the temple of God. Why and how are you the temple of God? Because your body, your life, your whole being is where God dwells. When the moment to you give your life to Jesus, Holy Spirit has come in. The spirit of God is possessing you. The spirit of disobedient is no more. The spirit of go and smoke is no more there. The spirit of go and sin, go and kill, go and fornicate, go and lie, go and rob, go and do all sorts of things. Fight against your neighbor, lie against your neighbor. Do this, do that. The spirit will not be there anymore. The spirit of God will take over your heart. Gradually, gradually, it will be penetrating, cautioning you, rebuking you, packaging you, Leading you in the way of righteousness. Gradually, gradually, you will become a man after God's heart. Just like the, the, he told the, the, you know, David. A, David is a man after God's heart. David is a man after my heart. Because David knew how to, to, to catch up with God. Hallelujah. Your body, my body is the temple of God. Let's remove every idol. Any idol, dear, whatever is not good is the idol. I don't want to be mentioning it so that they won't say, eh, I'm beginning to criticize or say, maybe. You know, sometimes when you mention people's sin, that's what I've noticed now. When you mention people, or even when you put posts to self, you put some posts post that relate to, everybody will be running away from that kind of post. What are you running away? That is the truth. That is the truth. God loves us. That is what God wants us to hear at that moment. So that... We can become the person he wants us to be in the mighty name of Jesus. He said, for you are the temple of the living God. As God has said. Who said it? It is not lovely. He said, as God has said. That is, this one now is 2 Corinthians 6, 16. He said, and what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said. I will dwell in them. Hallelujah. Praise God. May the Lord dwell with, in us. You know we are waiting on the Lord. If God come and dwell in you, that sickness will disappear. If God come and dwell in you, that pain will go. If God come and dwell in you, disappointment will not locate your domot anymore. If God come and dwell with, in you, that miscarriage will vacate. If God come and dwell in you, eh, that late marriage who will go back to his sender. If God come and dwell in you, if he come and dwell in you, that peace you are praying for in your marriage, from this minute, it will take effect in the name of Jesus. If God come and dwell in you, that long-awaiting job that you have been praying for, I see them locating you right there where you are. In the name of Jesus. Hmm. He said, I will dwell in them. And walk among them. What does it mean to dwell in someone and walk among them? Meaning, when God comes into you, 
He is leading you, directing your paths. Son, don't go that way. Daughter, follow this way. When you follow this way, go like that. Do like this. I will walk among them. I will be their God. He said, he will be your God. God is not saying that the moment you make yourself his temple, he will vacate and disappear. He will know you, he will know you not again. He said, he will dwell with you. He will, he will dwell in you. Walk among you. Be your God. And they shall be my people. We will end it here. Okay, let me, let me just take it a bit to 18. He said, and, I will, and you will be my people. You see, when you are the people of God, what do you think will happen? The Bible says, he that is with God is majority. You know, meaning, when you are with God, you are majority. You are superseding the whatever attack that is after your life. May God be your God in the name of Jesus. And 17 said, therefore, come out from among them and be separated says the lord come out from all these things that we have discussed here since you know today second corinthians 6 to this 18 come out from all those things and be separated be separated divine separation god wants to separate somebody he's separating you you have to allow him to separate you know that it's god that is separating you the separation can come in different form we'll take it further in the, on this topic divine separation hallelujah that is for today. Come out from among them. Say, do not touch what is unclean. Do not touch what is unclean. Anything that is not unclean, don't touch it. Now and after now. What I mean by now and after now? As you are waiting on the Lord now, that one day is fasting. We are our, you know, touch not what is unclean. Even after this fasting, continue to touch what is not, you know, unclean. And I will receive you. He said, do not touch what is unclean. And I will receive you. God is saying that he will receive you. The moment you are ready to repent, to change, to come back, to reject all those things, all those your behavior, all those things you are doing, cannot pay you, it can't, it can't earn you anything. And verse 18 says, he said, I will be a father to you. In fact, God is releasing his word. It's almost, oh God. When somebody is somebody's father, what do you think? You now, as a mother, as a genuine father and a genuine mother, there are a lot of counterfeit fathers and counterfeit mothers. You know, genuine father that, you know, God is for us now. He said, I will be a father to you and to me, and you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty God. Hallelujah. I give glory to the Lord. He reigns. I give glory to the Lord. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. I give glory to the Lord. He reigns. Adoration. Adoration to the Lord. He reigns. Adoration to my Lord. He reigns. Daddy, you reign. You reign. You reign. Jehovah. Adoration to the Lord. You reign. Almighty God, hallowed be thy name. Almighty God, hallowed be thy name. Almighty God, hallowed be thy name. Jehovah Yahweh, hallowed be thy name. Let's begin to pray. Open up your mouth and begin to pray right there where you are. Begin to ask God for, for mercy. Begin to ask God for, for mercy. Father, we pray for mercy this afternoon. We pray for forgiveness of sin. Lord, your children have heard your word today. I pray your mercy locate them in the name of Jesus. I pray for strength. I pray for power over their lives. I pray for your anointing. I pray for grace to obey all that we have heard today. Even in this journey of this fasting, as they obey you, O God, Father, turn their situations around. In the mighty name of Jesus, turn their situations around. Turn their situations around. Turn their situations around. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
Lord, in this season, you said you'll be our God. As we obey you, you said you'll be our God. You said you'll be our Father. You said you'll come inside us and dwell. You said you'll walk with us. You said you'll be our God. You said you'll live within us. Holy Spirit, live in me. Begin to pray that prayer. Say, Lord, live in me. Live in me. Live in me. Live in my life. Live in my body. Live in my soul, spirit. In the name of Jesus, live in us, O God. Say, live in me, O God. Live in me. Somebody open your mouth and pray that prayer. Say, Lord, live in me. Live in my body. Live in me. Come and live in me. In the name of Jesus, when God comes to live in you, every situation that is not palatable will disappear. In the name of Jesus, say, Lord, live in me. Live in me. Live in me in the mighty name of Jesus in the name of Jesus say my father come and be my God come and be my father come into my life today come into my life today and be my father be my father when God is your father you begin to do everything that a father can do to a child I am telling you it is the duty of a parent to cater for his children that is the duty of God when you begin to live you know, according to the word of God, when you allow God to live in you, God will step in and possess you. Many of us today, we don't allow God to come inside us. We don't give God a chance to come inside us to live. And because God is not living in you, he will just overlook you. You will just be wandering away. You just be going about like a sheep that has no shepherd. I am telling you today uh, that the power of God is locating you. Uh, the moment you open up your heart, uh, the moment you begin to see as God is seeing things in your life. The moment your eyes are open, the moment you begin to chase away darkness around you, I pray that you will receive strength, receive grace, uh, receive the power of God to begin to do that which is required of you. As a child of God in the name of Jesus, I am praying for somebody right now. I am praying for you. Let the power of impossibility give way in your life. By the virtue of this message, because God said he will be our God. He will be your God. In that situation, he will be our God. In that situation, God is coming in to be your God. In that arena where you find yourself, in the midst of that disappointment, I don't know what it is about, but I'm telling somebody right now that the power of God is moving like a mighty wind. is locating your situation right now and is turning it for good. In the name of Jesus, because you have accepted, because you have opened up, because your heart is open, because your heart is open. Apostle Paul said in that in that in that in that in that, in that, in that scripture, he said, "Open up your heart, your mind. Let your mind be wide open. Open it and let Jesus come in. When He steps in, impossibility will become possible. The Bible says, "With Him, all things are possible. With Him." All things are possible with man. Impossibility abides. Rakute ika prakata yarede. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, receive the peace of God in your life. Receive the power to do the will of God. Because when you receive the power to do the will of God, oh my God, the power of God will be manifesting in your life. God Himself will come over in you and dwell. And when God, imagine where the God is light. God is light. Say, I'm the light of the world. I am the light of the world. When he shines, darkness will give way. Therefore, I speak life. I speak light. I speak life. And I speak light. I speak life. And I speak light. I speak life. And I speak light. To those of you that are sick, I said I speak life in that body. I speak life in that situation. In that sickness, I speak life. In the name of Jesus. Those of you who has commented on that prayer, I, I, I told you to, you know, know, if you have any prayer requests, whatever your prayer request is about. Today, I sit in this office as a child of God and as a called servant of God. I decree and I declare that whatever... As many that has written on that, that post, I decree and I declare, as many that has written, as many that has written on that, that post, hey, my God, my God, they wrote it, 
they, they have put in their prayer request. Father, come and do only what you can do. Oh, come and do what only you can do. Father, come and do what only you can do. Jesus, come and do only what you can do. In their life, only you can do. Daddy more, only you can do. What man can do, only you can do. What no man can do, only you can do. What man cannot do, only you can do. Come and do what only you can do. In their life, Father, come and do what only you can do in their life. As many of them that have put in that, those prayer points there, and those that will still be coming in, Father, Lord, I decree and I declare, as their faces are different, so their needs, they have labeled it there. Many of them have put their own needs. They table it. They believe that you are here. Kalaba shata yagada. Rege zege debra soto lege debo shata yaga. Lord, they believe that you are here in this commission. They believe that you are here in this ministry. I am not saying you are not in other ministries. I don't know why you led them to this ministry. I don't know why you touched their heart to write under that poster. By the power in the name of Jesus. And by the power of the anointing of God upon my life. I decree and I declare that whatever may be your situation. According to as I have written in that post. Jehovah God arise. Arise, 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 arise. Begin to break yokes. Begin to open wombs right now. Those that are crying for conception, receive your baby. In the name of Jesus. Those believing God for husband, receive your husband. I call forth your husband from the four corners of this world. Hmm. I am telling you, the God that did it for me, God, you are still in the business of giving ladies their husbands. And therefore I speak wherever their husbands are. Redirect their footsteps to them right now. Is there any woman occupying their lives unnecessarily? Divine demarcation. That's what we are talking about. Divine separation. Divine separation. Father, separate them from that woman that is not for them. And direct them to the right woman. In the name of Jesus. The same thing you, that woman, that is still occupying yourself with that man that is not your husband. Some of you, you, you have to. You, you, you hang here and hang there. How can it happen? Leave yourself neutral and let God look at you. In the name of Jesus. Those of you praying for job, receive your job right now. That job that will give you smile. That job that God will give to you. And only you. Wherever you are, watching me from, when God give you that job, <laughs> that job that God will give to you, that within you, you will say, no, I must return the glory to God. And you must come and return it here. Because this is where the prayer is coming out from. Today, I decree, you know yourself, I don't need to know you. As that job is locating you, remember to come and sow. Remember to come and share your testimony. And so in this ministry, hallelujah, and the, and the power of God will continue to reign in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, to those of you that are believing God for peace in your marriage, receive peace. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you, not as the word given, given I unto you. I release the peace of God upon you. Receive peace in your marriage in the name of Jesus. Receive peace in your life. Receive peace in your life. In the name of Jesus, you spirit of disappointment, give way in the name of Jesus. To those of you who have been writing me on disappointments of marriages and all that, today, disappointments of general life, today I decree peace be still in that situation. In the name of Jesus. Those of you, here, yeah, I, I, somebody, I recollect somebody, you know, posted in, in, in that comment, he said, uh, I don't know whether it's he or she, you know, he said he, she needs a recovery from surgery. Father, Lord, you did it for a particular lady. That was a lady, you know, that called me. You know, uh, I think it's is this is um, last two weeks or so. Yeah, last two weeks or last um, uh, three weeks or so, you know. And and I've been praying for her. She want to go for. She, she sent me message. First of all, send me message at some point. She said she was afraid. She she you know she's going for a surgery, and since then she had been afraid. When she remembered the surgery, she would fear like she want to die. And I, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, I, I cancelled her and I prayed with her, telling her to please don't think anymore. God is taking charge and I will keep you in my prayer. Go for that surgery. You will come at life.
the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Many people has, 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 has gone into in, in the surgery room and they didn't come out. They died there. I am telling you, I am telling you, God is faithful, is real. And to the glory of God, I was surprised. I think two weeks ago or thereabout, just in the morning, I was just preparing to, you know, preparing the kids and all that. The testimony came in. She said she has been to the, the, the surgery room and she came out. She even showed me, she even showed me what came out of her tummy. I marvel. I say, what? What came out of her tummy? I'll share it. Hallelujah. It's just that I haven't gotten to that one. Like I told us, I'll be sharing those testimonies anywhere my hand reach. Because if I'm, if I say I should be doing it from how they all came in, I will, you know, to be taking me a long time. So I'm only numbering them. Number one, I think I'm, I'm in eight now. I think number eight. Yes, number eight. Number eight, seven, six, four, five, and five, four, uh, five, three, two, one, like that. So just gauge the numbers. Hallelujah. That, that God that did it for that sister, you that put that surgery one on this post to now, you said you need healing. God will heal you. He will heal you. God of divine healing. Heal that person in the name of Jesus. Those of you that have written a lot of prayer requests, prayer requests, may the Lord visit you wherever you are. God knows you by your name. God knows you. He knows that you have written under that post. You have commented and God will locate you in the name of Jesus. I soak you with the blood of Jesus. I soak your situation with the blood of Jesus. I soak your life with the blood of Jesus. May the power of God locate you and single you out with a testimony of come and see. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. God bless you all for tuning in. I will be leaving you right now. Please and please. Please and please. Give your life to Jesus if you have not. This is my book. Make Jesus your friend by the grace of God. Written by Evangelist of Linobi, The Power of Prayer with Prevailing Prayer Points. Heaven or Hell, Heaven or Hell, choose where you want to spend your eternity. Is it Heaven or Hell? Choose. An able woman in Christ. An able woman in Christ and an able man in Christ. You can be an able man in, in Christ. You can be an able woman in Christ. You can choose to be what God wants you to be. Hallelujah. All these books are written <clears throat> by myself, by the grace of God. Not by my own power, not by my own strength, but by the grace of God. Please make sure you are continuing the fasting. You are, you are, you are continuing the fasting. Continue to do it. The Lord will strengthen you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to appreciate you all, my viewers, my followers. May the Lord bless you, continue to favor you, continue to love you, like you, pamper you in the name of Jesus. I want to also encourage us, please, please, you are next in line to share your testimony. I'm telling you, don't take whatever we are doing here for a joke. It's not a joke. You are next in line to share your testimony. It may look like it's a joke or we are playing. We are not playing here. This is life, Facebook life. We are not joking. God is working, he's still in the business of blessing me. I want you to please key in, believe that you are next in line. Like I said, it's not about trying to repeat words or trying to show off. I'm not showing off anything. I'm only trying to encourage you. Even the scripture said we should we should we should share testimony. Hallelujah. We should share testimony. Testimony is you know, uh, uh, encouraged in the word of, in the Bible. So, to those of you that have been sending me, those, one, those ones I'm sharing are the ones that are coming from online. You know, people that have been connecting from my, from, from in, uh, my administration, you know, online, from all over, all over, wherever. From those ones from Messenger and uh, WhatsApp. Those ones are the testimonies, you know. These ones are the life ones here in the ministry. There is the ministry logo there. Christ, the beauty of holiness, international ministry. This, this, these are life testimonies of people. God has blessed with so many things. I, I pack them year by year. This, this, they are different, different years. 
testimonies of different different years. You are not faking it. It's not a fake. Hallelujah. Testimonies of different different years. Testimonies of different different years. Very big, plenty testimonies of people. Look at it. Testimonies of people. Life in the ministry. But I am here live with you on Facebook. For example, now, you know, we are we are we are in the church in a building. When it is testimony time, we call for testimony time. People will come out and we we'll give them testimony form, and they feel it. That is it. Look at it here. And more faking it. There are people that God has visited. God have answered their prayers. Testimonies. Some of these testimonies here are the ones I put on the website. In the ministry website, if you go to www.cbhim.org, if you go to the testimony section, some of the some of these testimonies here, I, I, I type it them. I type it there just to encourage people. The Bible says, do not add and do not subtract. I am not adding anything and I'm not subtracting. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is watching everybody. God is watching us and he will pay us all according to our work shall be. Hallelujah. So say he that is doing evil, continue in your evil way. He that is doing good, continue in your, in your good way. Whatever you know you are doing, continue to do it. And the Lord will bless you. That is it. I just decided to, you know, come up with the testimony forms here, the one slide here, just to encourage you. I am not bragging about it. I am only sharing with you what the power of God can do. If you believe in Jesus, he has done it for people before. If you believe, you will be the next person he will do for the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. These are the testimony form. These are the testimony form. So those of you that are sending in your testimonies in that messenger, keep on bringing it in. Testimony form. Christ the Beautiful Brennan International Ministry, CBHIM. Keep on sending in your testimony. Send them. The Lord will bless you. You know, membership form by the grace of God. I'm just trying to show you so that it doesn't look as if uh, we are doing childish thing here. Or I'm playing uh, or online. I'm not playing. Okay? I'm not joking. I know what I'm doing. This is what God has called me to do and I'm doing it for him. Oh, hearted me. So I want you to, to believe in what you, you know that in the power of what you know God can do. And God will remember you. You'll be the next to testify. Look at it. Plenty, plenty. A lot of them like that. Hallelujah. So, you are next in line. I'm only encouraging you. This is not a show off. God is still in other ministries that the Spirit of God is there. Hallelujah. Praise God. Please, I want to encourage you in the mighty name of Jesus. Please, like you, like you, like you all have been seeking, there is a project that is going on in Nigeria. Our mission has building project. Where the Lord will be transforming lives, doing all a lot of things, helping the, the less privileged, restoring lives, you know, rebuilding the brokenhearted, giving hope to the hopeless. Lots of things are going to be happening there by the grace of Almighty God. It is not by my power. If it is by my power, nothing will happen. Hallelujah. And I want to use this opportunity to thank you all that has been sowing and supporting that building project. The Lord God Almighty will remember you. And he will surprise you. God has been surprised. He saw some of the testimonies I'm sharing. Some of them have even so. Some of them even so before their testimony come. If you are reading those, those testimonies very well, you see that some of them even so. People who knows what sowing is about. Not people that you are pushing. So, so, so. I don't push people to sow. If, if you know what sowing is, nobody will tell you to support the work of God. Eh? The book of Matthew told us to lay up our, uh, our, our treasures. Matthew says, say, lay up your treasures in heaven. Your treasure, lay it in heaven. Where teeth, where worms, where caterpillar, where canker worms will not intrude in to, to thief it. In heaven. We should, not, we should stop laying up treasures here for ourselves. Ourself, ourself. Nobody care to support the work of God. Myself, myself. Forgetting that the life you are living is God. That job you have is God. It's God that made you what you are today. Didn't, you didn't give it yourself. So I'm using this opportunity, please, to, you know, tell you to please take 
your own envelope of seed offering. This is CBHIM offering uh, leaflet, offering envelope. Pick your own offering envelope right now. Sow your seed towards that building project in Nigeria as God is leading you. And God Almighty will bless you and reward you greatly in the mighty name of Jesus. That is the offering envelope, the seed envelope, tight, whatever, as God is leading you. I just, it just came into my mind today to just bring it up so that you see, pick your own. How can you pick? Pick it because you are alive. You are in different places that don't know where you are. How do you pick one of these envelopes? Emboss me. Send me a message. And I will tell you what to do. I will tell you, give you details where you can sow your seed in. Sow seed towards that project that is going on in Nigeria. I am telling you, your life will never remain the same. You saw that project there? It's people's seed. People's sweat. People's, people who love God and God has been faithful to them as well. So, and your life will never remain the same again. At least those that are sowing, they can see the, the evidence of what they are putting in there. It's going, it's growing up. Why, why a small, small, gradually we will arrive there. How beautiful will it be that your seed you are sowing towards the work of God is, is winning souls into the kingdom of God? Because that is the essence of you know, building and not building and not a, a, a tabernacle for the Lord, where souls will be won, prepared, teach, you know, prepare for the coming of Jesus, baptizing them in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit and the name of the Holy Ghost, baptizing them, bringing them to God, teaching them. There are a lot of things we need to be teaching the body of Christ of today. Because many of the errors that are going on is lack of, you know, informing youth, people, what they need to know, what will help them and become what God wants them to be. When time comes, everything will be showcasing itself. Whatever, you know, you're believing God for, whatever it is that, you know, so many things will be happening there, like I said. Teaching people, if you go to my website, if you visit that website, all those things that is, that is you know, is, is there, is what we are called to do. Is we, what we are called to do. If you visit the empowered women of Zion, all those things, there is what we are called to do. By the grace of God, so many things will be happening there. You can never step into CBHIM Nigerian branch and uh, remain the same. Jesus will surely visit you. He will transform your life in the mighty name of Jesus. We will do them as, as God has led us, the jobless ones, however, whatever, however God wants it to be done. Teaching people, skills, so many things will be going on there. So support the vision. It's a, it's a, it's a nice vision. Sometimes it's not only to preach the word. There are people who... who who want to hear the word? You know, they want to do the, the, the work of God. They want to serve God. They, but they don't have what they are doing. They don't have job. They don't have anything, you know, prostitution, whatever. By so doing, we can bring them in, you know, help them, organize them, fix them into something that they will be doing. And the joy of the Lord will be multiplying. That is it. That is the, the, the mission. That is the purpose. We'll be giving, you know, a, 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 you know, uh, 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 teaching, uh, be, be giving uh, education, um, uh, 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 basic education foundation to you know ch little little children that doesn't have a you know hope for education. We'll give them those help there. We're already preparing for it. You know, Hallelujah. We've been doing all those things for a while now, sending things home to help the the the, the, the hopeless, the less privileged. I don't want to say. It. Sometimes I share some of them on Facebook. Even I still have some things here packaged. Let me show you some of the things. So, it's not joke. The educational materials. So, those of you who have a... I'm using this opportunity to tell you. These, all these things are things that I'll be shipping to Nigeria. Look at them here. These are learning materials. Learning materials. F fill up all these places you are seeing. Look at them. Things that they'll be using to learn. 
These are charity things for the helping of the privilege. A lot of things. Hallelujah. So, maybe you are, you are watching me right now. You have uh, things that you don't want to be using again. That is it. That is our, our uh, class for our outreach, CBHIM. So you are in the right place. I'm the right person speaking to you. It's not like a fake or anything. Look at them, you know. A lot has been sent home. Praise God. It's all to the glory of God. So why I'm showing you all this is for you to do what? Contribute your own part. Amen. Contribute your own part. If you have uh, books, look at them too. Sorry, all these um, all these uh, books here, all these things are, you know, books for kids. All these things are going to Nigeria by the grace of God. When the day comes, there are things kids are learning with, learning accessories for ch children. So we are getting ourselves ready. We are preparing gradually, gradually. So we want you to support, you know. If you are here in the UK, you have uh, uh, story books that your kids are not using anymore, or you have clothes or shoes, anything that you don't, you know, you don't want again. You want to use it to support, you know, the charity, the mission. Bring them in. Call me. I can come and pick it. You can drop. Some people do drop to my house there. They even even though you boast, they drive down to my house. They sew it. Hallelujah. So that is it. Praise God. I don't know how else I'm going to say it. I don't, I don't like talking too much. Especially when it comes to giving, giving, giving. I don't know how to, you know. But Holy Spirit will convince you. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit will convince you. Yourself. Amen. So please. I beg of you. Pick your own envelope. So you can sow your seed offering towards that building project in Nigeria. And the Lord God Almighty will bless you richly in the name of jesus no matter where you're watching from whether you're here in the uk or anywhere just give me a shout give me a shout the lord will bless you thank you so so much for joining me today i appreciate your joining so many of you are here i may not be calling names right now and the lord will bless you the lord will bless you the lord will bless you somebody is calling me right now so thank you so much bless you i'll be leaving you right now bye Bye. Somebody is trying to call me. Let me just answer. Bye-bye. God bless you all in Jesus. They remain blessed. I love you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.